Hi and welcome back to Free Edu Hub. As you know, we have started a new series of lectures where we are covering all legacy operating systems released by Microsoft. We have already covered installing Windows 2.1 and 3.1. You can find their videos on our channel. Now today we will install Windows 95 which was released on 24th of August 1995. It's not a very straightforward procedure, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible. So we'll start with the installation of Windows 95. Name the operating system and then you can select a directory in which you are going to place it. Select Windows 95 from the list. Press next. You can allocate around about 512 MB of RAM and then no changes over here. No changes here. Dynamically allocated and I'll prefer giving it only 150 MB of storage space on my hard drive. Now once that's done, very important step is go to the settings and then go to system in acceleration, uncheck this option. Enable nested paging, just uncheck it, press OK. Now we'll go to the settings again and we'll select the storage. So in order to continue with the installation, we'll have to install MS-DOS on it first. So remove the empty drives that we have. Then uh, we'll click on it and we'll add the image of MS-DOS. As you can see, I have selected MS-DOS. Remove this empty file from here. Press OK and then start. It's very important to remove the floppy disk from here, press enter and before you restart I would recommend adding the new image file which is there for Windows 95 installation. Once that's selected, press enter. Now as you can see that it has recognized my CD-ROM drive and that's the big problem when you're installing Windows 95. If it's not recognizing your CD-ROM drive, you won't be able to install Windows 95 on the computer. Now in order to verify if we have the C directory on the computer, you'll go to C and then you'll type DIR. It means that you can see the files on it. If we want to check the partition, we'll go to A drive and we'll type F disk and then press 4. So it would show you the partition. Make sure that you can see the label as well as the FAT16 as the system file format as well. If it's not appearing, you'll face some problems in installing Windows 95. So press escape, escape. Now we'll go to the R drive since it was saying that our CD-ROM is over here and we'll press DIR and you can see the files appearing over here. We'll type setup dot exe and press enter. see Windows 95 has been successfully installed so we'll go through different features which were there in Windows 95. If we we'll double click on the time clock you know the interface has been changed and unfortunately it's still the same interface so far. Here you can select the region and then uh, if we want to change the volume of the computer we can do it from here. 
If we right click on the desktop, you have the same icons as icon arrangement by name, type, and auto arrange, lineup icons. We can also create a new folder, wave sound, or a text document. All those options are there. If we we'll click on the properties, we have the options to select different wallpapers or pictures or different patterns. Uh, even we can select the themes or screen, screen savers from here. In the appearance, we can change the overall appearance of it, colors, etc. And in the settings, we can change the resolution of our monitor. So that was about the display properties. If we'll click on computer now, you can see that CD-ROM is appearing over here. Then we have our C drive, so everything is a graphical user interface. You don't need to go to MS-DOS in order to look at the files. And uh, if we'll close this one and uh, we'll go to the control panel, we'll find lots of interesting features like accessibility options for the keyboard, etc. Sound, display, contrast, the mouse settings, and the general settings for the keyboard and mouse. So if you want to add any hardware components to the device, you can click on this one. If you want to remove any programs, you can go to the install or install programs. And even if you want to add or remove certain features in the Windows add remove components, you can do it from here. For example, if we click it and we want to turn it off, we'll simply uncheck it and press apply and OK. So that feature would be removed from the system. Startup things, if you want to create a startup disk, etc. Date and time options are again here. The same thing that we saw earlier. Display settings, we can adjust it from here as well. We can select different fonts which were installed on the operating system itself. Now we can even browse the things on the internet and we can change the settings for that. Our basic setup for the dial-up modems because at that time we used to have dial-up modems mostly used at home. And then we have joystick in case if you are interested in playing games so you can connect it. Keyboard settings where you can adjust the blinking rate and the speed of it. Again, modem as I told you, we used to use dial-up modems. Then mouse settings, if you are right-handed or left-handed and what would be the speed uh, if we are double-clicking on the uh, left key. Then uh, we had the options for the playback and audio recording. Same goes for the video and uh, CD music, advanced and other settings. Then we can even uh, set up the network from here. And uh, we had different options on this one. So if we click on the settings, we have IPX and some basic setup for the network interface cards. This is the name of the computer and the level of sharing, etc. If you had any saved passwords on the computer, you can check it from here. Power options is showing you if it's a laptop and connected to the power. So uh, it would indicate uh, that the battery has been charged or not. The printers would show us the printers that we have added, almost the same as we have now. And then the region and currency settings, etc. If you want to have it in your own language or in English. so. And then in sounds, we can click and play different sounds which came with Windows. And then finally in the system where you can look at the drivers and update them with the hardware profile and the performance of a PC since it was a 32-bit system and the system resources are 92% free. So that was in the control panel. And uh, if we'll click start, and we'll go to programs. We can see in the accessories, the same tools that we have seen in the control panel. In multimedia, we had players. Even media player was there to play certain audio or video files. Then in the programs again, in the accessories, we had multimedia and then there are system tools for disk fragmentation. 
and uh, scan disk so it's coming since windows 95 then if we we'll click on the calculator they have improved it as compared to windows 2.1 and 3.1 again it's a scientific calculator next is uh, on the system tools uh, we checked it and then if we are going to imaging in order to see the pictures that was a nice interface for imaging okay so if we wanted to scan any document we can use this software for that and then uh, it had different options to modify the scanned document interesting okay next is uh, notepad it's almost the same even till today there is no difference in the overall functionality of it you find almost the same features still in notepad file then in online registration that's for the registration of the operating system for paint um, it's almost the same as windows 3.1 but they have changed the color picker as well as these options which are still almost the same in MS Paint and uh, you can draw a line and then you can even rub it using the same eraser tool which is still coming in the latest computers. So when the change is now then we we'll check the other options like uh, phone dialer that's for the dial up modem and word pad very advanced as compared to 3.1 and it's looking looking really professional as compared to when those 3.1 and if we select it, we can bold it, we can change the form, and uh, we can even increase the size of it. So it was much advanced, but mind it, Microsoft Office was not released till that time. It came in 2003, so uh, still they were shipping it with the WordPad, and with the help of which we could do lots of things. Again, you can see the indentation, right and left, and the bullet numbers, etc. Bold italics, all those options were available in this version as well. Okay. Next is if we'll go to the programs, uh, we have finished I think all of these options now on online services that's for the internet services etc. On startup there was nothing and then we had the first version of Internet Explorer which was installed on this one and uh, you can see the logo of Internet Explorer. Further you can change the fonts and settings. And I'm really interested to see if we can set up any proxy settings or anything like that on this one. I don't see the option. Properties, no. On the security, no, nothing's appearing like that. But email was there, as you can see. You can click and read email and compose emails, etc. Adding to the favorites, home, refresh link, and other things very interesting okay so next is uh, internet email and internet news then Microsoft net meeting was there which is Microsoft teams these days and then we had an excellent MS DOS prompt over here so as you can see there were lots of improvement in this operating system as compared to 2.1 or 3.1 and if you will shut down the computer you have an option of MS DOS over here so if we we'll click on it, it would restart in MS-DOS mode and we don't need to go to separately on the command prompt. So that was it about uh, Windows 95. I hope you liked it. Thank you very much.